What's up everybody? Welcome to the Miniverse. So I've got a, a big project that I've been working on and it hasn't been working for me, working out for me very well. I've, I'm hitting a lot of, a lot of uh, roadblocks. So I needed to I needed to try a new technique that I haven't used before uh, to try to help me out with that. Um, so that big project, that'll be another video, but I wanted to share with you guys the, uh, the technique that I'm trying to learn and I figured I'd put it on camera the first time I tried it so um, it might be kind of entertaining to, for some of you um, so anyway yeah this is the, the test piece I made um, and so the technique is basically uh, rock molds plaster rock molds from aluminum foil which that technique's been around forever and ever and then um, make my own sculpt a mold to fill in the cracks and that I got from, uh, I think I used like Luke's APS recipe. So anyway, let's get into it and I'll show you how I did it. Alright, so this is a pretty old technique. Uh, making the plaster molds out of aluminum foil. you got to do three sheets, I guess that's what they say, because aluminum foil is pretty thin. So I uh, just glued them together with PVA and I decided on the inside sheet that I would, I would crumple it up first before I glued it down. Try to give it a little bit more texture. Um, I haven't seen anybody else do that, but um, it's been around so long, I'm sure somebody else has tried it. Uh, and then I made some folds in there for some of the deeper crevices in the rocks. And then crumpled all that back up. Uh, just got to be careful not to get the edges crumpled down in there, because it's almost impossible to get them back out without ripping the foil all to pieces. And once I had it about where I thought I wanted it, I flattened it out a little bit and curled the edges over to make a little you know a little barrier to hold the hold the plaster in that big bag of plaster I got from Home Depot for I think 12 bucks and I just mixed some of it up I didn't really have any idea what I was doing so I just put a little bit more water you know a little bit of water in there at a time and mixed it up until I thought it looked about right um, and it, it ended up working pretty good so happy with it you know just dump some of that in the mold and spread it out flat you know made sure there wasn't any aluminum foil sticking up out of there and then we'll let it dry so I went to pull the foil off of it and it stuck a lot you know a lot more than I'd seen in other people's videos and I think it's because I crumpled that that last sheet of aluminum foil up first before I glued it down so all that extra texture in there I think it just made it hold on really well and I like I said I didn't I don't really care about breaking it up because I'm gonna break it up into tiny pieces anyway um, and yeah I struggled to get it off of there but I think you know it really didn't take that much time and I think that all you know the extra effort I think was worth it because I got some really cool looking texture on there See, that's I think that's looking pretty good right there um, I did want to add a little bit to it because it looked a little bit too clean. So I took that wire brush and I poked a bunch of holes down in there. I'm not sure if that camera really picks that up or not, but um, it did add some texture in there and made it look a little bit more weathered, a little bit more eroded. Uh, so I went ahead and did you know, the whole thing and of course that created a bunch of dust that I had to brush off of there before I continued. And this is a little test piece, Just I just made a little base and then used some scrap pieces of foam cutoffs and, and uh, broke those plaster rocks up and, and glued them in there until they you know, pretty much covered the whole face of the, of the thing. I probably could have turned them over and scored them and fit them in to do better, but like I said, it's just a test piece. I wasn't, I wasn't being super careful with all of it. Um, and I will tell you this though, hot glue does not really hold plaster very well at all. I mean, it'll hold it there a little bit, but as soon as you bump it, it pops right off. So, onto the sculpt mold. I use this green, it's just uh, cellulose fiber. So it's basically just like recycled paper and cardboard and stuff. I uh, just mixed it 50-50 with uh, plaster and then added a little water and they say that you're supposed to mix it until it looks like um, tuna salad or tuna mayonnaise or whatever 
like you put on your sandwich, so that's about what I was going for. And I think it was I was pretty much there. So I used my just used my hand and, and put it on the flat parts and stuffed it down in the in the little cracks and everything. I wasn't super careful because again, like I said, it's a test piece. But I did when I got it in the in the texture of the rocks. I did try to go ahead and scrape it out of there with my finger and with the little spatula and stuff just to try to preserve some of that. I didn't spend a heck of a lot of time on it. Just just wanted to cover the whole thing. It took maybe 10, 10 minutes, I think, to do this this tiny little piece of rock. And there it is, all dried up. I made three different washes to uh, to paint it with because that plaster soaks up wash really well. Uh, so I used el uh, yellow ochre and then just a standard brown and then a black wash. And I just started with the lightest one, yellow. And I did you know about 50% or so, maybe maybe 75% of the the rock faces with the yellow. And then came back in with the brown and did. Did some of it just brown and mix some of the brown over the yellow, just give a bunch of variations. And then I did black wash and I was just going to do the rocks and then I, once I started getting it on there I couldn't really tell where the, where the rocks were supposed to be and the sculpted mold was supposed to be so I just ended up doing the whole thing. Just covered, covered the whole thing all, all over with, with black wash. Uh, and these washes, they're just it's just watered down acrylic paint, acrylic craft paint. There's nothing special, I didn't even put a fluid in there. So once I pretty much got that whole thing covered, I went back with a paper towel and soaked it up out of the crevices. There were a lot of little crevices in those those plaster rocks, and I was I was kind of afraid if I left it in there it would reactivate that plaster, so I wanted to dry it up a little bit. And I wasn't, you know, I mean, it, it looks okay here on camera, but in person I wasn't super happy with this at all just the way it was looking but I decided to go ahead and just just go ahead and paint the uh, the dirt parts and then and then flock them uh, just to see and I'm really glad I did because just just putting this paint on uh, just putting the brown paint on where the dirt is on top and around the base there um, just doing that really made those rocks pop out and look <laughs> a hell of a lot better than they were looking you know, before that That's just straight brown paint from Dollar General. Nothing special at all. See there, see how much better that looks? Yeah, I was starting to get kind of proud of it. <laughs> right, right there. And the other side. It's looking pretty good. I mean, it's not, it's no masterwork piece, but for just a test piece, yeah, it was, it was looking pretty good. I was, I was pretty proud of it. And then, uh, next up, just put some flocking on it. Um, just PVA. Obviously, just squirted PVA over it and brushed it in a little bit, and got my, uh, my homemade flocking out. Same one I made in the video before, and just sprinkled that all over the PVA, and that was enough to you know, it pretty much came came right to life. And uh, I'm really happy with just the way this this little test piece looked. That really didn't take me all that long at all. There it is, let it dry. The only thing else I did to it was spray it down with some watered down PVA. So there it is on my forest terrain. And it looks pretty good from afar, but we zoom in on it and it, it still looks pretty good, but you can tell there's a lot of little spots on there. My, my painting washes could be better. You know, it, I see a lot of room for improvement, but overall, I think it looks pretty good. All right, guys. So that's some new techniques I got in my in my toolkit now. Um, it looks pretty good. I, you know, like I said, I think it's uh, I think a little more practice. It'll it'll look a lot better, and it's a little little different from the kind of terrain I do. A little more realistic looking than most of the terrain I usually do. Um, but I think it's pretty cool. I think it turned out pretty cool. I'm glad to have it in my toolkit. And thank you guys so much for watching. And if you haven't yet, please go ahead and subscribe. And if you want notifications, hit that that bell button. 
And if you want to see more crafting and more D&D stuff and, and uh, any tabletop gaming related stuff, go head over to uh, Tabletop Dungeoneers channel. Uh, there'll be a link down below. And uh, thank you guys again for watching. We'll see you next time.